you. Anybody want to sing? I won't sing. I'm about a matter of fact, if we'll just open our spiritual eyes this morning, guess what we can see before we leave? Can I get a witness in the building? Give the Lord praise all over the house. Father, Lord Jesus, we love you. We thank you for your goodness, your grace, and your mercy. Thank you, dear Father, for all that you do for us, just allowing us to be in the house of God today to be able to worship you in spirit and in truth. Father, I pray, I pray God that you bless every home and every family, God, that's represented here today. And Father, we thank you, dear Father, for the ones that's come our way, God, this morning that may be visiting, for, visiting with us, Lord Jesus. I pray, God, that you would richly bless them and that they may leave this place much differently than the way they came. And Father, I pray for the preaching hour and the songs of Zion that will stir our soul one more time this side of heaven. Now, God, that we'd honor you in all that we do and all that we say, God, this morning, that there'd be one here, God, lost, that don't know you in their free pardon of sin. Father, I pray you'd bless their soul and allow them to come around an old-fashioned hour of repentance before it's everlasting too late. And Father, I thank you, dear Father, for touching me already this morning. God, I already feel your presence here. Now, Father, I pray, God, that you just continue to touch us and move our soul closer to you. In Christ's name we pray. And God's people say it. And God's people say it. And God's people say it. Give the Lord praise all over the house today. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Anyone who's ever seen the mountain of their sin just disappear. For anyone who's ever felt the hand of heaven reach down through their feet, dry their tears. Oh, any life wants it and it finds itself alive and for a song.
Sunday morning. Uh, it is a joy uh, to be here. We're looking forward to what the Lord's going to do and how the Lord's going to help us today. And I want you to do something uh, just, if you will, uh, stand with us. All right, go ahead and stand all over the building. Teens, y'all go ahead and make your way up into the uh, uh, choir area there. They are practicing on the song. Uh, going to help there. I don't know what's what that is. Is that you? Praise the Lord. All right. <laughs> All right. Wonderful. While they're doing that, uh, tell somebody you're glad to see them uh, in the Lord's house. Just turn around right there, wave at somebody. Tell them you're glad to see them. All right. It'll, we'll get past flu season and we'll be back to handshaking, neck hugging, and all that business. Uh, but we do appreciate you being here. If today is your very first time, you are an honored guest. Uh, let's welcome those that are uh, worshiping with us today for the first time. Thank you so much. All right, you can be seated. Uh, you should have got a packet of information. If you will, go ahead and uh, fill that out sometime during the service. You can drop that in the offering plate uh, toward the end. And uh, Miss Georgette's coming to bring the, the whip sure that they don't act up. All right. Amen. Uh, this is a song I think they just learned. And, uh, you know, the Bible says this in Hebrews 11 and verse number one. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And we live, the Bible says the just shall live by faith. However, I will say this, speaking of evidence, if you look around your life, there are some evidences of God working in your life. Even before, Raymond, before you ever came to know him, there was a God in heaven that was out after you. He was an old truck driver, had a neighbor he'd stand at the fence and share a cold drink with. And that neighbor quit coming to the fence. He thought something happened. Something did I make him mad and all. And God got a hold of his neighbor, and it wasn't before too long that God got a hold of Raymond. Amen. Aren't you thankful that God will do a work in your heart? Listen while they sing. All throughout my history, your faithfulness is all beside me. The winter storms make way for spring. 
sing a song that says about the goodness of God. Uh, the Bible said that his goodness lead, leads us to repentance. Um, certainly there's much to be said about the holiness of God. He is a thrice holy God. Did you know that? The seraphim, they cry holy, holy, holy. I read a commentary and I never thought about it this way before. Brother, Brother Robert, he said, maybe the reason that they do that is they've been doing it for thousands of years, but every time he turns just a little, they get a new glimpse of his glory. They get a new glimpse of his holiness. And they cry out once again, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. I'm glad for the holiness of God. But in all of that, he showed his mercy and his grace toward you and I. And today we are recipients of the grace of God. A little bit of Bible doctrine. We are living in what is called the day of grace in the church age. We don't have to go and offer bullocks and we don't have to go and offer turtle doves. Jesus Christ, one time forever, yep. sat down at the right hand of the Father and said, It is finished. Amen. After that he had shed his blood, after that he had offered that perfect, sinless sacrifice for you and for me, and today I'm walking in, and today I'm living in, the goodness of God. Oh. 
the time. The teens have a touch on them to, today, huh? Absolutely. Woo! Very much. Jason, come here. Come here, Um. Destiny, and along with her mom and dad, started attending our church right at Easter last year. And um, generally, a, a in, an individual teen does not have a, a huge impact on a group. However, this young lady right here, God has used her, and that has set her on fire for Jesus. Um, and I'm, I want to say you know, I'm not too um, so you can go back and I was reading reports this week as far as I know right after chapel on Wednesday in a little college in Kentucky the chapel speaker got up and preached and he said he felt like his message was kind of flat that wasn't anything special. But some of those college students stayed after chapel and they hadn't really left from then till now. God has been pouring pouring out his spirit. God's just showing us out there and there's no real agenda to it. They're just meeting and praying and calling out on the net the name that can change everything. Yes. See, it's not in some political figure. It's not in our denominations or a preacher's personality. There's only one name that can change this world. There's only one name that'll change your family. There's only one name that'll change that one that In your heart. 
There's nothing my God can't do. Uh, nothing too big for him. Anybody else just want to brag on Jesus? I want to say hello to the Better felt than tell anyway. Anybody else? y'all heard you might not have could saw it but it was Cam singing back there God. and uh, I reckon I've known this boy since he was a baby and uh, I've watched God work in his life um, he followed the Lord in baptism here not too long ago and I said it then and I'll say it again um, watch this young man right here <clears throat> God's going to use you you want to say anything for Jesus Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anybody else? Anybody in the back here? Any of y'all? Y'all might need to put a microphone in here. Oh. Uh, right. Yes, sir. Go right ahead. 
we're almost heard when we read the scriptures at home here and hear about all the wonderful things that God has done in someone's life, children's life, where he took them from, from, from where he was to, to the great place he was Moses' life. Uh, Last great thing from the dead. What was encouraging when we hear with one of our brothers and sisters share a testimony of something great that God's done in their life? It's terrible. It inspires us. It inspires our, our, our lost person to take an interest in the Lord and serve him. I'll tell you an interesting thing. If your life is going wonderful, awesome. Praise God. But sometimes God will take us through uh, a series of experiences to give us a testimony or a new testimony. Mm-hmm. And at the time that he's taking us through it, it might not feel comfortable. They might not feel there. They might not be there. And it might feel very wrong. But you didn't go wrong, like Joseph. Mm-hmm. So when Saul said, you know, stay in church, you can stay faithful to keep loving the Lord. It's not going to be perfect, but you're doing your best. God will bring you from one mountaintop down to a valley, to a very high mountaintop, mm-hmm. and give you another new testimony to add to the prior testimony. And when you meet strangers, the various strangers that you go to and travel, and you tell them the great thing that God's done in your life, it will encourage you. As much as it always encourages us to hear someone tell us, I, I, I meet a lot of people every day where I do. And I meet some of my brothers and sisters in Christ, and they tell me the great things that God's done in their life, and I'm stunned and shocked at the Lord. And I say, Lord, I, I, I pray for you in my life, and I allow you to my brothers and sisters here in Christ. So if God will be taking you at any point in your life, this week, this year, whenever it may be, through the experiences that we can't quite understand, just know it might be possible that He may be giving you a new testimony. And when that testimony is complete, it's something that will bless the lives of so many people you haven't met yet, and it will encourage them and uplift them, and it will give God full glory. Amen. God bless you, Brother Sean. Anybody else? I want to share something, uh, just a scripture. Y'all can have a seat somewhere. It won't take too long, I don't think. Uh, um, in 2 Corinthians chapter number 1, the Bible says here in verse number 8, uh, 2 Corinthians 1, there it is, verse number 8, For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure, above strength, insomuch that we despaired even of life. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not Trust in ourselves, but in God, which raiseth the dead, who delivered us from so great a death, and doth deliver, in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. This is the thought that God impressed on my heart, and I never, I didn't understand why he didn't give me a whole lot of extra for the message, but now I know why. He didn't need a whole lot of extra. He just wanted this thought. Brother Robert, there are problems that will arise in our life that will push us down. 
there, were, there are burdens that will come on our life that we have to carry. And Daniel, in carrying those, they weigh us down. As the pressures and problems are placed on our life, they continue to push us down. No doubt, Satan looks at the child of God as we're being pushed and pressed down and thinks, I've got them now. But what he don't know is there is where we can find strength. There is where we can say this is as far as I'm going to go. This is as far as it can go. I'm gone. You push me down to the floor. You push me down to nothing. And I ain't, I ain't staying down. I can't stay down. There's a God that will pick me up. There's a God that will help me in my time of trouble. Paul, in these verses as he writes to the church of Corinth, he reminds them of some sufferings that they were going through and that he had gone through. He said the sufferings of Christ abound in us. I don't know about you, Jay, but I, don't, I want the grace of God to abound in my life. I'm not asking for the troubles and the sufferings of God to abound. What the Bible is saying, uh, I believe it's Philippians 3 and verse number 10, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. I love the power of the resurrection, but if we're going to have that, then we can expect there'll be some sufferings that we have to go through. And Paul wrote to him and said, whether we be afflicted, we endure the same sufferings. And then he reminded them here in verse number eight, uh, he said this, he said, we would not, brethren, have you to be ignorant of, the, of our trouble which came to us in Asia. What trouble, you might ask? In Acts chapter 20, there were a, a, a group of Jews that laid in wait, waiting to grab a hold of him and to take his life. In, in Ephesus, he, in 1 Corinthians 15, the Bible said he fought wild beasts. Now, You've been around doing some evangelism, Brother, Brother Fraley. You've done a whole lot of stuff, but I reckon you've had to fight too many wild beasts, at least not the bad, you know, the Baptist kind. You probably have. <laughs> Hallelujah. But Paul had gone through it, and that wasn't enough. In Acts chapter 14, he was stoned and thought to be dead dragged out of the city and left. And that's where we get those great verses in 2 Corinthians chapter number 12. It said, whether in the body or out of the body, I don't know. It said, I saw a man and I was called up to the third heaven. Well, I was telling a preacher friend of mine he was going to make a visit with somebody and God spoke to me in a hospice room one night or one day. I was making a visit to somebody in hospice and they were there for, I guess, several days and they hadn't had any kind of reaction but they were still breathing they still had activity but they were, were not able to wake them or anything like that and God spoke to me about those verses if Paul could experience why could another child of God not experience it and I was looking at that Child of God with their mouth, you've been there, their mouth sitting open. They're having to swab their mouth and keep it moist. And I thought to myself how sorry 
and, and, and it was just hurtful just to look at it. But God said, you don't, you don't see it from where I'm seeing it. I'm letting them experience some things you don't know anything about. And I don't want to sign up for sufferings. But I'm glad to tell you, when we do, there's a God in heaven that will let us experience his glory like no other. Somebody else. There are problems that will press us down. There are times that we even feel like nothing will ever get better. Paul said we were despaired of even of life. You ever felt like I just don't feel like living anymore? It would be easier if I just didn't live anymore. But we had, verse number nine, but we had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God. There was a proclamation that had to find him. He thought things can't get better, things can't turn around. Has Satan ever whispered a lie to you and told you God's done with you? God's through with you? Things ain't ever going to get better. You're done for. And you started to believe it. Maybe you looked at a situation like Mary and Martha did. Where have you laid Lazarus? Oh, Lord. He's over there. He's buried. It's been four days. He stinks by now. Jesus said, where have you laid him? Show me the grave. Steve, when they walked over there, they rolled away the stone and showed where they had given up hope, where they had buried their hope, where they buried uh, their dreams, where they buried their life, and said, God can't do it no more. And he called out uh, with just a few words, uh, and everything changed. Lazarus, come forth. And just like that, he come walking out of there. I'm here to tell you, uh, no matter where you laid it, no matter where you buried it, no matter how long it's been, how stinky you think it might be. There's a God that can step in and change everything in a moment. Verse number nine said, but we, but in God, but we should not, excuse me, we should not trust in ourselves, but in God, which raiseth the dead who delivers us from a great death and doth deliver in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us no matter where you come from no matter what you got going on there's a God in heaven that can turn it all around I want you to stand with me if you will. I need a, somebody to play piano for me. I look, all my piano players are gone. Uh, come on, Miss Becky. Help me right there. They started going over there and getting things prepared. With heads are bowed and eyes are closed, pressed down pressed under. Lord, I can't take the pressure anymore. Good. You're in the right place when you can't take it no more. When I am weak, he is strong. Father, in Jesus' name, here we come. Here we come. Lord, I just want to tell you, I thank you for your mercy. I thank you for your grace. I thank you, God, for who you are and how you help us.
how you encourage us. Maybe right now there are many in this place that are in a, a time and a season of, of pressure. It seems like everything's pushing you down. It seems like that it's too much for you. Here we come. Here we come. In the name of of Jesus. Oh, God, help us. Oh, Lord, touch us.